Hey everybody, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, that website address for you. If you don't already know what it is, it's TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. One of my favorite parts of doing these blogs, doing this, these videos, even written posts. I mean, I've been doing a lot more of those lately and I want to do more. Um, because I know different people like to get the content in different ways. A lot of people like video. A lot of people like audio, so I have a Stitcher channel. Um, a lot of people just want to read. Sometimes they're at work and they don't need the noise. They, they just want to be looking at a screen and reading. So I'm going to be doing a lot of written posts as well. Today's video is answering a viewer question because I love answering your guys' questions. Keep them coming. I will keep you anonymous unless you specifically tell me not to. Then I will not. Uh, but most people want to re remain anonymous. And if you don't specify, you will remain anonymous by default, just like this person. So he did not specify, but I'm keeping him anonymous by default. Um, it's about blogging and blogging for research clinics and specifically how to set up a blog. So I've done videos on why blogging is important, why I believe blogging is important for clinical research sites. CROs, SMOs, whatever it may be. Um, I'll have a link to that video for those of you who are interested in learning why. I've kind of um, discussed that numerous times already, so I'll link to a few of those videos. Um, it's effective for building a brand, finding patients, getting studies, all that stuff. Okay, so this guy has specific questions, like how to set up the blog. We currently use Facebook and it isn't very effective at all as most of our trials target older populations. So yeah, Facebook, there's nothing wrong with having a Facebook fan page for your research company. Um, I recommend you do that. What I have a problem with is companies who only have a Facebook fan page and think that that's all they need. They don't need a blog, they don't need a website. I think that is very foolish and I think it's foolish because Facebook can and in fact has changed their policies and they can change their policies whenever they want um, based on their own profit margins. So Facebook recently introduced something called sponsored posts where they encourage brands and fan pages uh, to promote their posts so that more people can see them. And of course by promoting your post you're paying Facebook to show that post or status update to everyone in the stream. So right now, let's say your Facebook fan page has 700 likes. When you post something like, hey, go to my website or post a picture, or post anything, not all 700 people are going to see that. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Facebook changed that. They changed the algorithm and they won't tell you how they changed it or why, but you can, I guarantee you, it's related to the sponsored post and they want these brands to pay for their posts to show up in everyone's stream. So if you have 700 likes on your Facebook fan page and you post something, not all 700 are going to see it. It's more like 7 to 14. Try it if you have a Facebook fan page. Underneath the post, when you post it, you'll see exactly how many people saw it. And it's never going to be anywhere near the amount of likes you have. So, that's a reason why I don't think Facebook is that effective. I think it's good to have it. It's free. Definitely set it up. Um, but as far as like targeting study participants or even targeting like doctors or physicians or just anyone, I mean, not even that specific, just targeting human beings, it's not the best way to go about it. You need a blog because when Facebook makes these changes or even Twitter or whatever it may be um, like MySpace, remember MySpace? Nobody uses MySpace anymore. All these social networks they come and go but your blog is there to stay. Your blog where you should have an email sign up form just like I have on this blog on the side if you see that. If you're watching this on the blog look to your right you should see a big pink like neon pink email sign up form that is what I'm trying to get people to do. Sign up to my email list. Now I have you as a potential customer or at least someone that I can send emails to. Um, that is far more valuable than having a Facebook like. 
uh, for the reasons I just described. I can send you emails where I'm competing with other emails, but for the most part, their emails related to work, their emails, people go through their emails, it's like chores, it's like doing chores, it's like assignments. If they see something that's unique and different, they'll probably click on it just because they want to escape the monotony of checking their emails. On Facebook, people don't go on there because they, like people who are on Facebook are there to talk to their friends, they're there to look at pictures, they're there to gossip with people. So if you post something about your research clinic, I mean, it's pretty boring compared to the alternative of what people are on Facebook to look, to look at. And you, you're, you're competing against very difficult competition, which is people's friends. In email, you're competing against people's other emails, which most of the time is work-related or just stuff that they're not interested in. So capture the emails. It's very important to capture emails. You can only do this by having a blog. I mean, you can do this with a website, but a blog is even better than a website because it's not static. You can constantly update it. You can constantly produce content and provide content for the people that you're trying to target. You can constantly, Google constantly crawls the internet, websites and blogs for new content so that they can include in their search results. You're gonna get tons of new, new customers, new clients, new eyeballs. Uh, based off of Google Words, so if you do a good job of analyzing traffic and analyzing what people are searching for, you can create content based on those search parameters and start getting people to click and sign up to your email and hopefully do whatever it is you want them to do, whether it's join a study, whether it's give you a study, whether it's just capturing their email so you have that database. Do it. Um, we are a small site, four research coordinators, one recruiter, which is the person who sent me the uh, email, and a three-person management team that handles the business side. So yeah, whether you're big or small, um, medium size, it doesn't matter. Having a blog is extremely important. In fact, this is the one space where the small companies can compete with the big companies because Google does not really care about uh, how big your company is, they care about the quality of your website, they care about the amount of links that other people are linking to you, and if you write interesting content or produce interesting content, it could be video, audio, written, whatever it may be, people will link to you. That's what Google cares about. In addition, Google cares about new material, uh, so anything new. If you constantly update your blog, you will show up in the search results. And in this space, there are not too many people providing content for these kind of terms and especially when you get into specifics like if you're trying to do recruitment for clinical trials which it sounds like you are there's not a lot and you can start blogging about the therapeutic indications that your clinical trials cover you can talk you can start talking about clinical trials in your space in your indication you can talk about all kinds of things and get people you would have never thought um, who would be interested in a clinical trial to perhaps at least sign up to your email list and then later on you can approach them about studies. And you can also get into a lot of the local uh, traffic, which is keyword specific for your region. So let me know if this helps. I do consulting. I've helped many research sites, CROs, biotech companies set up their blog. I do it. Reasonable price shoot me an email, dan at theclinicaltrialsviewer.com. I want to give my clinical trial producers a shout out. Sarah Elizabeth Siegler, Resolve Research Solutions, Accurate Clinical Trials, Earth Heart Clinical Trials, PTNR, Patrick Stone, Deshaun Kukarni, Biofarm Systems, Zymar, Mozio, South Coast Clinical Trials, Breakthrough Clinical Trials, and St. Paul Medical Research Center in Miami, Florida. If you want to be a clinical trial guru producer, it's $99 for a lifetime membership. You get mentioned in every video. I'm only accepting 100 people, and that's it. So if you're a producer, if you have a company, a brand, an organization, or just want to promote yourself, I'm accepting 100 people, 99 bucks for a lifetime membership. You get links to your site, which helps with that Google thing I talked about earlier, and you get mentioned every single video as well as a lot of social media promotion by me every now and then. So hopefully this helps. Send your questions to dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com, and thank you very much.